15, 25 hours, Dave and I are down here in the old nursery, what will someday be the chemistry lab, and we were trying to take a painting off the wall, and I usually you grab a painting and like you, you get a thumb in behind it, and it comes out a little bit, and then you lift it up and you set it down, that's how it's done. This thing, I'm messing with it, and it's, it's like stuck, and I pop a thumb under it and the whole thing just, well, there, there's, that's the painting. Okay, and it's a shitty painting. I mean, really? Hey, I like cows and all, but come on, man. No, this is, this is, this is crap. So the, uh, on further examination, you can see they had mounted the painting to the Not wall no. with hot glue. Hot glue. The dog does not approve. And the dog wants to walk in broken glass. Yeah, you're a problem child. Yes. But hot glue, all the way around, hot glue. Now, for those of you that may ever hang a painting, you'll notice it's conveniently located on the back of this frame, which came from the crystal gallery. There's these little jagged thingies, okay? This is where you put a nail in the wall, and you hang little jagged thingies. They, they go over the head of the nail, or the screw, or whatever. You could do that. You don't use hot glue. Wow. Just previous owners. And... I'd like to point out that the previous owners, the same people who hung this frame here, used this room as a nursery. You trusted these people with your children. Think of the children. Don't be an idiot. <laughs> we'll be back. Don't Paul! Yes? What you got going on? This is a huge contact. That is a really big contactor, yes. Really big contact, yes. And there's an electromagnet in here. There's some extra contacts and whatnot. I'm going to go look it up on the internet to find out how we can hook this thing up because this thing is rated at 7,200 volts and it would be just wonderful for the charging circuit on the ring launcher. That isn't a little bit overkill, perhaps? It is gross overkill. <laughs> From what I hear, it's your suggestion. But it's your suggestion. It and is. Nothing exceeds like excess. Okay. Now, while you're doing that, you may want to take a look over here. Because I'm fine with you using that. But you may just want to consider something less egregious. And go with something. Okay, if you got something less egregious, why did you suggest that in the first place? Because it just came in, and I thought it was nifty. Now look, look over here. What about what about that? Well, set it on top of something. Ah! I'm pretty sure you're not going to weld that shut. The whole thing is what the contacts are rated for voltage-wise. I want to write down more part numbers. Uh, it's no, going to be rated, rated, rated for right 600 down. volts. Well, great. If we want to put 4,000 through it, it's not going to be good. We don't. This is the charging circuit. We need a contactor to disconnect the charging circuit from yep. the power circuit or from the capacitors. Because you know what happens when you fire them off. He does that all the time. He just won't like, shut the fuck up. And yeah. Remember the rectifier? Hey, Paul. Yeah. What about it? Grab that. Batman, I'm going to let you. Batman, grab that. It's, it's kind of big. I like that one best so far. Of all the ones we've looked at, I like this one best. Look at that. I'm going to say that'll hold off four kilovolts. I don't see any plates on it. I don't, I don't think you're going to find plates on it. But that's I'm saying adorable. that'll hold off four you kilovolts. That little Right there. Yeah, that's the switch. That's adorable. We that's just got to see if we can switch it. The contacts are in here, Paul. I this understand. is the ancillary circuit. The question okay. is, is it single pole or double pole? Single pole. Single pole won't work. Why DC not? DC contactor. Okay. 600 volts max. Um, we need double pole. We need two poles yeah, because you've got two ass. sides of the capacitor. Pain in the ass. Well, I got nothing down here It's going to be rated for kilovolt range, except maybe that. Check that. I know that's not rated at kilovolt. What is that? That's a... It's a couple hundred amps at, uh, what, 600 volts? 
It's a vacuum contactor, isn't it? No, yeah, we'll take a look. Take a look. This plastic box. This goddamn thing, I tell you what. Here, we got more men. We got more uh, mods. Other way around. James, 30 vacuum contactor. Model voltage, 600 volts RMS. We can do 2,000 amps, rated at 250 amps continuous, actuator volts, 100 volts DC. Uh, no. You're not making me feel good, Paul. You're not making me feel good. All right, use the big damn bar. It's got to fit inside the box, though. It's all got to fit inside the box. Well, that's a bit of a problem. Well, that's the rule. It's got to fit inside the box. Because totally I need that to be portable so we can take it around to dump. In the meantime, we can do research. Research? What do you want to research? Uh, I found a giant eight foot fluorescent. Okay. We have a, you know, giant dust coil right there. Do you want to go break glass down by the dumpster or do you want to play Star Wars and I'll let you hold that in there while I push the button? Sounds good. Okay, get inside both. <laughs> I go get inside the cable size. Ah, right. Huh? You know, we could set, set that on You can't drive, but he can. Okay. Take that. Paramedics are on standby. Get up. Yeah. Give me about a three foot over. Make sure you stand in the water. The water. Oh, yeah, give me a three foot arc. It anyways. How are you on time? I've got 2.30. Okay.
are holding in You should hand. see the mail I've gotten. I've got like 50 people freaking out. Like, dear God, it's Mercury! Why did it yes. turn blue? Huh? And then back to white. There's a hole in the middle now because the post was, was grounding it. Where was if you look, there was a little teeny tiny spark. Oh, okay. It poked a hole, the gas leaked out, and that's why it went from the middle out. Right. There's, there's a little hole right here. Yeah, I was wondering if you were going to melt the glass and the thing was just going to sag. Yeah, that took a long time to kill that. The right, it's right there. I saw it. Yeah, there's a little hole right oh, there cool. and that's where all the gas leaked out. And did you see how the color faded from the middle out? Yeah. Yep. That was just awesome. And then what, was it going back to white, just lightning passing through the well, glass? Well, the spark was going down the inside of the tube. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We need more of these. Well, we, we can do more of this. You guys have fun, we'll be back. Here at the Geek Group, we've invented a new fundraising strategy. You can now purchase impressively tiny coins we've compressed using high-energy magnetism. We induce a current pulse of 100,000 amps into a copper wire coiled around a golden dollar dime or quarter, producing very powerful opposing magnetic fields that compress a quarter to the diameter of a dime, which you then receive in a lovely commemorative package along with the satisfaction that can only come from helping the Geek Group build our endowment, which in turn will allow us to put membership fees, donations, and sponsorships towards furthering the organization rather than just maintaining it. Carry a lightning bolt in your pocket, available at thegeekgroup.org. I learned how to run a machine shop. Set up an enterprise level server. Program nine foot robots. Make lightning! Edit video. I'm building a radio station. Light bulb terrarium. A high performance electric car. I'm a CNC geek. Computer geek! Robot geek. Physics geek. AV geek. I'm a radio geek. Craft geek. Car buff. No matter what kind of geek you are, we've got a place for you here at the Geek Group. Come join us. We build awesome.